still cold outside. It's about 32 degrees, 33 degrees right now, and it's 1230. So um, I need some things at the grocery store, so off I go. You reading your Bible, honey? Yeah. Where are you reading at? Genesis. Okay. Are you starting over for the new year? I guess. <laughs> I'm going on to the grocery store. All right. Anything you want? Not that I'm aware of. You want me to bring you back a sandwich from somewhere? Well, that uh, chicken sandwich. Okay. Skipper has been kicking at night and kicking some of these boards out. So Joe is putting screws in to try to secure them better, to keep them in the track. Okay, got the drill hole. Now he's putting the screw in. I think he's going in at an angle. Yep, that fixed it. On to the others. See on this barn door, she's knocked this one out of the track. We're going to have to try to get that back in there. And on the other side door, she's kicked that bottom one in. I tell you, when she gets cold and hungry, she gets testy. <laughs> We're looking for a pair of glasses so I can read on this battery charger. We, we ran out of power, so we have to get the battery pack charged back up. Who are you talking to? And it's going to be a blistery cold week. We're trying to get this work done. It's cold today, but at least the wind has finally settled a little bit. But it was strong last night. It sounded like the siding was coming off the house. Roof. And the roof. <laughs> Everything. That we don't see any damage. Just some limbs in the yard. So... When we get more power, we'll work on the saw doors again. It's coming down, isn't it, honey? Yeah, it sure is. I mean, to tell you, it is coming down hard. I don't like it. Well, I know, but you'll be thankful for it come 4th of July. Well, guys, this is our first significant snow of the season, and um, this is mid-January, and it's the Arctic blast. It's coming through like it is most of the country, it seems like. <coughs> so we're supposed to get anywhere from four to six inches today. <sighs> At least I don't have to get out in it and drive like we did when we had to go to work. I had a wreck one time. You had to come to my rescue, didn't you? Yeah, I sure did. And I don't like driving in snow ever since then. It was an awful crash. It was awful. I thought that was going to be the end of my life. Yeah. But I had been out of town that week on a business trip and came home like 7 o'clock on a Friday night. And I just went straight to bed. I didn't turn on the news, see any weather or anything. And I had an early morning hair appointment. So I got in my car and drove to the hair appointment. And while I was getting my hair cut, the snow started. 
And by the time I got out and drove to the grocery store, because I needed milk and bread and different things, when I came out of the grocery store, the flakes were so big and fluffy, and it was just piling on the road thick. You couldn't see the lines on the road. You couldn't tell if you were in a ditch or on the road. <laughs> but I lived out in the country, and it was this kind of curvy road to get to my house. And um, you were very curvy. Yeah, well, where I wrecked was in the worst curve. Right. Yeah. It's um, a truck, when I got midway through the curve, a truck was coming toward me, and we were both kind of in the middle of the road, I guess, and we were going to hit, and I turned my wheel to the right quickly to avoid that, and when I did that, it caused the rear end to fishtail, and it slammed up against a rock embankment. And I had four wheel drive in, and I guess the four wheel drive, the tires caught the rocks on that rock embankment. Yeah. And it just flipped me over. Yeah. And uh, the truck stopped and came running, and they said that I went from end to end like two, maybe three times. And uh, I, it was a country road, and there was this uh, barbed wire fence where they kept cattle across the road with the metal stakes, the metal T-posts. And I was just expecting one of those to come in the wind and get me. <laughs> but all I had was a black eye where the uh, rear view mirror came off and hit me. So my car was kind of totaled. <laughs> and I called um, 911 and they said no one was injured. They were, weren't gonna send anyone out because the roads were just too dangerous just to try to get my car off the road as best as possible. And it was still a good ways from my house, though. It was too far for me to have to walk with my groceries and everything. So I called Joe. We were just dating at the time. And he gets in his old faithful black truck that belonged to your dad, remember? Yeah. And he made it down there and took me home. So. Took you home. Took me home. We made it safe. Country roads. Country roads. Hey, <laughs> so anyway, that's the main reason why I don't like snow anymore. But um, we're going to make some potato soup this afternoon. I gave Joe his choice between cabbage beef soup or potato soup, and he chose potato. I chose potato. Yeah. So the recipe I'm going to use is a recipe that came from a restaurant that we used to go to. Look at the people and talk. <laughs> uh, it's a recipe from a restaurant in Abington, Virginia that we used to go to quite a bit. Um, we used to ride bicycles on the Virginia Creeper Trail. That was so much fun, wasn't it? Yeah. We had a group of friends that we did that with. and. Um, on our way back, we'd stop at Allison's restaurant to eat. Yeah, take our bicycles and put them on the back of the car. Yeah, and drive to Allison's. And sometimes we just get a group together and drive to Allison's for dinner, like at Christmas or something like that. And um, they had really good food. They had good barbecue ribs, and uh, they smoked them at a different location and brought there. They told us. But Joe has a special memory from Allison's. Yeah, it's a place of no return. <laughs> what, what happened? Well, I was eating a full-blown meal, a steak or a, and a salad. Salad. What kind of dressing did you get on the salad? Uh, he usually gets blue cheese as his favorite. Well, I guess it was blue cheese. No, it wasn't. Okay. You got what was it? Balsamic vinaigrette. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember that now. It's all coming back to me. And he was sitting beside of me. We were with a group of friends. And all of a sudden, he was going, oh, oh. like he couldn't breathe. I couldn't breathe. I'm not, I'm, so, I'm not kidding you. I was at the point of death. I was at the point of death. He was about out of air. Yeah. <laughs> and we was beating on his back, trying to help him, and he finally started coughing. But what had happened is that balsamic vinaigrette went down the wrong way in your throat, I think. Yeah, that stuff was very dangerous. <laughs> it was potent. 
Yeah. But uh, he thought he was going to die. But it happened twice. Yeah. That was that one incident you're talking about now, the initial one, and then the next time we went, a uh, time or two later, we well, did it again. Yeah, but it wasn't as bad as the first time, though. No. Uh, right. But anyway, Allison's is no longer there, and we've been thinking this week about things we used to do that we don't do anymore, and places we used to go that's not there anymore, and it's sad. It's sad, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. And all we've got left is memories. So my advice to you youngins is get out and do what you enjoy. Be with your friends and family and have a good time and cherish every minute. Don't take that time for granted because there will come a time when you can't do it anymore or the places aren't there anymore. Um, so it's sad. But we're going to make Allison's potato soup tonight. And I'll, it's so easy and so quick, but it's delicious, y'all. Yeah. Well, it's time for the evening feed, so I'm headed to the barn. And I'm telling you guys, it's a mess out here. This is why I don't like snow. <sighs> it's so hard to keep things in shape. But it's still snowing, half rain, half snow. Skipper's been staring up at the house for the past hour where she's wanting to be fed. Oh man, how sloppy. I'm staying off the concrete pad because it may be icing over. Sure, don't want us to fall on that thing. Hey, Skipper and Nico. Y'all doing okay down here? Skipper, are you being good to Nico? I know you're hungry. Mercy. I brought you a good warm bed. Let me set it up here for you. Go to the rescue again. I'm starting to make the potato soup for supper, and it calls for two cans of cream of potato soup. But this one can, the tab was not glued down good, and it just would not open the lid. And the can opener wouldn't touch it because the lid was down too deep around the rim. So Joe is trying to go around with the knife along the bottom because I I tried to get a bite with a can opener on the bottom and it did make a hole in it but it would not turn the can around to open the lid. So Joe's seeing what he can do to get it off. Okay, we were having a hard time getting the lid off of that Campbell's cream of potato, so we said forget it. <laughs> so I dug out another can of a food club cream of potato, so we're going to use that. So to this pot, I have added one can of cream of potato soup, and this is the second can. It calls for two cans. that empty can honey and it calls for two cans of diced potatoes and I've already put one can in there and you drain the liquid off of the potatoes diced diced potatoes I could get it in this pot, but I need... Okay, got a bigger pot. So there's two cans of cream of potato soup and two cans of diced potatoes in here. Then I'm going to add two cups of heavy cream. One 
one cup of milk and I'm using whole milk. And that was just one cup of heavy cream. I need to get the heavy cream out again. <laughs> just had a cup, measuring cup out there. It's just been one of those days today. Now let me get another cup of the heavy cream. And believe it or not, that's all the ingredients. You just heat this up and bring it to a boil. And the soup is almost to a boil. And the recipe said to let it simmer for about 15 or 20 minutes, but you don't have to do that. Once it's reached a boil, it's ready to eat. It's just like if you're opening up a can of tomato soup or something and you just want to heat it up and eat it. That's what this is. So. It won't be long, and we'll be serving that up and eating supper. Okay, we got the soup finally served up in our bowls. And I think Joe's going to have his um, fried cornbread. I'm going to have crackers, salty crackers, I think, if I have anything. But I'm going to put some of this thick cut cheese, four cheese blend. In mine. You want it in yours or you want pepper jack? Okay. Mm. <clears throat> That's good. Okay. Alright, we're going to ask the blessing? Yep. Yeah. It's been a while since we have stirred this in so the cheese will melt while we pray. Oh, okay. Well, let's just leave that thing. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day. Praise your that holy name and all that you do for us. We're so thankful for the blessings upon blessings that you give us. And we want to do whatever's right in your eyes, in your sight. And we love you and praise you for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I went to the barn and took care of the horses, gave them plenty of hay and some grain, and cleaned out the stalls. I kept Mercy in the garage today. I didn't want her to get out and get wet and then get really freezing, you know, or kind yeah. of get wet and freezing. So I just kept her in the garage today. And uh, everybody seemed to be good. Mmm. Mmm. Is it good? That is good. That does not taste like canned soup. I put a little salt and pepper in mine, and then Joe just put pepper in his. This is delicious. Now, this recipe would be good if, if you were alone or just two of you and you just want to make a half recipe. You can certainly do that. No problem. But we really liked going to Allison's restaurant in Abingdon, Virginia. It was just in a really old building. and it was a little drive-in. Yeah, it was an old drive-in, but I'm um, sad it's not there anymore. I'm drinking water kefir with my soup and Joe's having buttermilk. <laughs> but when we were young, growing up, we lived in the neighborhood where all the roads were real hilly and we had a great place to go sledding in the snow. So all the kids in the neighborhood would come out and we like to go sledding at night. There's something special about it at night time. And um, one of the parents had a big burn barrel and would set it up and build a fire in it. So whenever we got cold, we'd come over and stand by the fire and warm up our hands real good and then go back to sledding. And then when we were through, we'd go in and Mom had made 
delicious homemade cocoa, hot cocoa, to warm it with. So those were good times. All this soup is just really good. I recommend you try it on a cold night. Quick, easy, delicious. Well, it's Wednesday morning, about 7 a.m., and I looked on the phone and it said the temperature is 5 degrees. So I don't know what the wind chill is, though. So I know those horses are ready to eat, so I'm headed out. Easy. Easy. It's just a crunch of the snow. Easy. Easy. It's Mama. It's Mama. I'm coming to feed you. I know you're cold. I know you're cold. Good morning on this cold Wednesday morning. Got up. It was five degrees this morning, and the uh, weather said the windshield was minus four. So got out and got the horses fed, and they were so happy <laughs> to get some feed and hay to get their bodies warmed up. And Mercy's in the garage. She's a little cold and staying in her bed. And so I've been flavoring another batch of water kefir. So today's the day that I need to um, flavor it. It's been fermenting for four days. So today's the day to flavor it. So I'm going to work on that. And um, I'm going to turn the camera back on Joe because I've already done a video on how I flavor the kefir and how I make it and let it ferment. And I'll try to link that um, in the description box below if you want to go and look at that. But we love water kefir, don't we, honey? Yeah, we do. It's so good for your gut. And it's, it's a delicious drink. So we keep it going all the time. And for Joe and I, I fix it in a half-gallon jar. And um, once it's fermented, I flavor it here and start another one starting to ferment. So we have kefir all the time in the refrigerator. So by the time we drink up what we've got in the refrigerator, this will be ready to drink. And um, then we'll start over with flavoring this one in four more days once I get it started. But anyway, I'm going to put the camera on Joe, and we're going to talk about all this cold weather. And I know all of you all out there are experiencing cold weather. It's extreme, and we're just not used to it being this cold. And yes, I have my barn clothes on. They're clean, and the shirt looks dirty, but they're just stains that won't wash out. But I've got my cuddle duds on underneath the shirt somewhere down there, and my pants. We got the temperature set in the house at 66. We got the gas fireplace going downstairs. So we're staying warm. So I'm gonna put the camera on Joe and let him talk about memories of cold weather. So here is my handsome husband, Joe. What's left of him? Yeah. So we were just talking, What? how long has it been since we remember it being this cold or lots of snow and power outages. Our power's not been off during this so far, knock on wood. And we're thankful for that. But right. when when's the last time you remember it being this cold? And you got to speak up because you're way over there. Well, it, it's really uh, about as cold as it ever gets here. There's only, only two other times that I can think of it being this cold. One, uh, you said in the 80s or something? About oh. 1982, I think it was. Yeah, I remember that too. Or maybe, was it in the 70s? I think it's the 70s that I remember. Late 70s. It, it, was, it, was, it was a tough time like this. Very yeah. similar. Yeah, it was very, very cold. I was driving my Camaro during those years, and it wasn't good on ice or snow. <laughs> no, it wasn't. <clears throat> so, what do you remember about it being cold? What kind of problems did you have? About anything you can think of. Now, I remember the most recent one was in the 90s when we had all that snow. Do you remember how much snow we had? The power was off for like two weeks. Yeah. It's when I 
Doug, my friend Doug Hogston, he he gave me a ride home that night, and we did, I got home just about dark. And uh, it was really an intense. Did you have trouble getting at that hill there that goes over the no, river? No, he had or? a four-wheel drive Bronco, so that Bronco would go. Yeah. Well, I remember trying to get to work, and um, I left my house in Colonial Heights, and I was driving down the hill to the red light where Lebanon Road, and uh, there's a gas station there and a bank building, but my car just started sliding sideways on ice, and it was sliding toward the parking lot of the bank, and I thought, Lord, just help me slide on in that parking lot and not hit anybody, <laughs> and I'll park it, and that's what happened. So then there was like a jiffy market uh, across the road. So pizza, it was, pizza joint, was it? No, it was that jiffy market there on the corner. It's, I think, a roadrunner now, but at that time it was a jiffy market. But I went in there where it was warm and uh, called in to work and said, I'm parked here until they do something with the roads where I can travel but I don't want to get out and have an accident. So I was sitting there for a couple of hours just drinking coffee in the jiffy market. <laughs> and they salted the roads and I was able to go on into work then. Somebody was taking good care of you. The Lord has always taken good care of me through the years. I've done some really dumb things in my lifetime. And I'm sure you have too, haven't you? Yes. <laughs> and the Lord has saw us through it, and I don't know why He was so merciful to us. He just looked and said how ignorant we are. <laughs> but uh, He kept us safe through all of it and then brought us together yeah. many years later. So... Got the water kefir flavored, and I flavored it with the um, juice, the red seven juice blend concoction. Yeah, it's good. That's that's our fra favorite flavor, I think. And my other favorite is to flavor it with uh, chopped ginger and some fresh squeezed lemon juice, and it tastes just like ginger ale. But anyway, we're just hanging inside. The high today is going to be about 25, and uh, fortunately I don't see the wind blowing like it has the past week. Um, we've got leftover potato soup that we can eat after a while for lunch. That'll be good. And then I've got some hamburger thaw and do something later with that this afternoon. That'll be good too. Whether it's more soup or something else, we, we need to decide. We'll figure it out. Yeah. But I'll go back down and give the horses some more hay around noon and um, make sure they're doing good. And you all stay safe and warm and um, use this time that you're uh, snowed in just to uh, read your Bible and pray to God and get close to Him. Love on your family and uh, take care of each other. And we love you guys. Thank you for watching our channel. Spring is coming. Spring will be a spring. All right. So in the meantime, y'all keep walking in the light. Okay.